Maintaining Simcha Sakhayim uh, in difficult times. I don't think this, this title is Miyuchah to this generation. We, we've had this challenge in many different ways throughout our history. So, let's first understand that our ancestors, parents, grandparents, great grandparents, all the way from uh, suddenly the tribulations that we went through in the Midbar, oh sorry, Imagine you're coming out of Mitzrayim and four-fifths of the Jewish people, so there's got to be neighbors, friends, and probably family as well. If not immediate family, it's extended family that are not with you. They perished in Marcus Chayshev. So you could easily say, well, you know, we're going through all these incredible nisim, but some of the children might have a hard time understanding four-fifths, that's 80% of the Jewish people are not Let's go a little bit further into history. Uh, most of Kali Israel died in the Midbar because of the Chet Hamaraglim. Uh, let's move fast forward. Um, destruction of Bayes Mission. You've got B'nai Israel, the survivors, being dragged unclothed to Babel in chains. And the children walking with their fathers, with their mothers, what's the question going through their minds? How are we supposed to be Basimcha with our Torah and our value system? The, the Beis HaMikdash is in destruction. The Jewish people are now being thrown into exile. How will the parents successfully imbue in their children Simcha Zechayim amidst this incredible tragedy? <coughs> Fast forward, Korim Bayesheni, same question. We're being dispersed. The Hefetz Hashem Etchem. But Amin, you're being dispersed amongst all the nations. South, North, Rome, Asia. We, 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 are, we are being dispersed throughout the world. And the same question begs, how are we going to successfully be sufficient role models of Simcha Sakhaim, Simcha Sakhaim, amidst dispersion, expulsion, persecution? Fast forward. You can go almost there's so many tkufas in our, in, our, in our history. Fast forward to the Crusades, the Inquisition, Cossacks, Tafatat, Tsarist Russia, Communist Russia, Third Reich, Jihad. And today, perhaps you could argue we have a different type of Marcus Koshek, where it's not as overtly, openly the type of Yusurin that was experienced only barely a generation ago, in Germany, Poland, Hungary, France, throughout Europe, where millions of Jews perished. Today, there are maybe 13 million Jews in the world, of which the vast majority are disappearing within about 15 years, if the demographics are correct. The assimilation rate is so rapid that a Jew will not be recognizable as a Jew because they don't belong to a shul, they, they're not married <coughs> Jewish, they, they may look or have a Jewish name. There's no affiliation to Eretz Yisrael. What will be the hook that will maintain their relationship to Yiddishkeit? It's close, it's close to a zero. And that's happening fast in front of our eyes. And then in, in front of our eyes, literally, in the front community, we are suffering tremendous fallout. And even though it looks as though it's much more on the surface, it's much more apparent amongst our youth. But what's less apparent and is surfacing faster and faster, it's literally a volcano beneath the surface, is a massive, we're not talking about hundreds, we're talking about thousands of families who are married with one, two, three children, waking up with the same question that the teenagers have already asked and don't feel satisfied with the answer, why am I from? Why should I stay from? So we're going through a lot in terms of internally and even globally that's attacking from inside out our value system, our Yiddishkeit. And you could say, well, can we just talk about maintenance of sanity, let alone Simcha? Any questions on this? Any comments so far? You okay? The Oh, Cool. We have a So let's let's ask ourselves 
No, is Simcha a mitzvah min amukha? Is it le'ikaradin? Where do we see that the Torah actually commands me, instructs me to be with Simcha? And how far does that mitzvah go if it exists? Does it even exist in very trying times? Even when things are really going difficult in my job, with my career, with my boss, or with my children, or with my spouse, or with my mother-in-law. With my father-in-law. How can I I think the father-in-law joke, I really do. Um, my mother-in-law recently, are you okay with the mother-in-law jokes? <laughs> yeah. My mother-in-law recently came to visit, uh, visit us unexpectedly, and uh, um, she pulled into the driveway. I was just coming up uh, the house going to Minza. I said, oh, hi. Well, uh, how long are you planning to stay this time? She said, well, as long as I'm welcome. Said, oh, so you're not staying for coffee? <laughs> <laughs> it's pure humor. It's no reflection on reality whatsoever. <coughs> whoever, whoever is in my life that I'm having a hard time with, with my kids, with my parents, with my boss, with my coworker, with my hibrusa, uh, with my neighbor, do we cover everybody? <laughs> how, uh, uh, does the Torah ask of me to be Basimcha when things are good? Oh, that's obvious. Or am I commanded to be Basimcha even when things aren't good? And if that is true, how am I supposed to do that? You hear the question? Oh, so let's start off with the first question. Is, uh, does the Torah command me to be Basimcha? Is there such a mitzvah? Any suggestions? Yantav. for Samach Tepecha Gechas. So we definitely have a mitzvah on Yom Tov, the Ashramir, and only be Basimcha. Uh, according to the Vilna God, it's, it's said in his name that he claims out of tired mitzvahs, he found that mitzvah the hardest mitzvah of all. Why? Not to be Masih Das, ah, Samir, only not to be Masih Das from Simcha for seven, well, Chutzlar, eight days? He said that's, that was the hardest mitzvah. Where do we see a mitzvah even all year round? In the title of Perak Havches, Parshas Kisavai, Perak Apostle Mem Zion, I think it is, where you've got this frightening list of the Kalalis, the Hasbashan will come upon Kalalisrael for our disobedience, our falling away from Akash Parabu, and all of a sudden, close to the end, there's this insert which reveals why would all those frightening Kalalis be deserving, and suddenly there's this insert, Tachas. Which means in place of, because of, Ashaloya Vazta and Ashimelokeka, Besimcha. Because I wasn't enjoying being a from yid. Yeah, we got the got Yeah, okay. Alright. So here I have, I'm slightly embellishing the wording, Tafas Ashaloya Vazta Shimelokeka, Besimcha, I wasn't enjoying being from. Serving the Kutch Barku. Daphne, learning. Keeping the mitzvah. Oh, interesting. We're not finished yet. We'll be too late on. With a good mind, we'll translate it in a few moments why it's mind and not so much heart. Merai Kyle. From the abundant good. So let's look at the word Basimcha. <coughs> the word Basimcha means to be happy in the moment. Basimcha is in the now. But he's happy. Claims the Arizal. The exact letters, Bersimcha, are the exact same letters, Machshava. Why? What does Machshava mean? Thought. Where does happiness take place? In a pinky? Elbow? Kneecap? Where, where's happiness? Oh, it's a choice we make in our mind. What's the choice I'm supposed to be making? What is that choice? Betuv Levav. Now, what does the word Lev mean? Unfortunately, in most of our translations um, don't deliberately follow um, the King James Bible, but it's, uh, in many hundreds of cases it does without, without consulting Chazal. The word lay, unfortunately, vast majority of times is translated as heart. I say unfortunately because the Torah gives us four meanings to the word lay. The word lay, first and foremost, means mind. We'll look at a few seconds. Number two, it means the icon of emotions. And that's usually what's referred to in the translations. The translations, vast majority of times, maybe slightly more than 9 out of 10, are not correct when it comes to translating the word lay as heart as an emotion. We'll see in a few moments. The third meaning of the word lay is it's the physical heart, as when you place Philip connected Levi. The fourth meaning is it's simply a marshal, it's a metaphor, as in lay <coughs> hayam, we say every morning. When the walls of the Yamsuf came crushing down on the midst it wasn't. 
Leiv Hayam, there's a heart inside the ocean and the Yamsu. No, it means in the midst of the turmoil. Um, says Moshe Benu in Perak Dalet, I think Apostle Yud Aleph, in Varim, when he's uh, in Varim's Parshish Vezchanon, where he's repeating uh, the whole Mamat Hasinai, he says, the Behaha Boye, the mountain was flaming, Ad Leiv Shemayim. There's no Leiv in Shemayim per se, it just means the, the midst of the fire and the turmoil of the... So it has four meanings. Unfortunately, many times we are... <laughs> We're stuck with not translating our Torah according to itself and according to Chazal. Um, as you know, our own Hachamim, they translated the, the, centri- the Torah into Greek. It's called Targum Shivim. And even though that was a nice scholar, what was a nice scholar? 72 Hachamim were sequestered in 72 separate buttons. But Nasan Hashem, Hashem put in the mind of each one of them. The exact same touch. So that's an open miracle. Not, neither of them knew what each were doing. There were 72 separate houses, and each had quill, plenty of parchment and ink, and, and they were given each one sefer Torah, and they came out with the exact same translation. That was arguably a much greater miracle than Nes Hanukkah. Much greater. Nes Hanukkah was witnessed by a few Kahanim. It wasn't, wasn't so obvious with the Pacha Shemin, but over here, 72 sages, the population of Alexandria actually made a yomta about that, that occasion, and Chazal claimed that's why they were wiped out. And just last week, it was two weeks ago, you and I fasted. So I'll translate that. Fasted. <laughs> we, we fasted on Friday, a son of the Tabes. One of the reasons we fast, 2,400 years, is because of the tragedy of this translation, which our own Hakamin made. Masech the Sofrim, Perak Zion, I think it's Ice Allah, tells us the only day in our history that is equivalent to the tragedy of the translation of our Torah into Greek, the only day that meets that tragedy on the same level is the Chet Ha'igel. Whoa! Chet Ha'igel, that was a bit Well, when reading a translation of the Torah, what's the danger? What's the obvious danger? I might think that I'm reading what? What the Torah says what the Torah means. Oh, so the Torah Shabbat pair, the missing information, if I'm not accessing that, which you can't in translation, okay, if you have a Perush, but even the Perush has to be intelligent. It has to be intelligent. That's what Rosh is always doing. He's not going to translate the word solid, freeze it there. He's going to show you why this word means this meaning, and he'll show you from various cases throughout Tanakh why it means that in this context. But we are stuck with, unfortunately, many translations that have butchered our Torah. <coughs> so the danger of reading any translations, I might think that I'm reading the Torah. Hashem wants me to understand the Torah in its original, <coughs> in the Lashon Kodesh. Because Lashon Kodesh is layered, unlimited layers of meanings. And they're all correct. So, here we are with the word layer. <coughs> the Maral offers the first time a word appears in the Torah, first time appearance of a word, the context of that word is the meaning of that word. Where's the first time the word lame appears in the Torah? So, anybody can here? Uh, you, could, you look it up. It's in Peret, Vav, and Gracious, Parshas Gracious, right at the end. Pastor K. Vayar Hashem Hashem so ki rabba rasa adam ala aretz. The wickedness and negativity of man on earth was abundant. The call yetzer machshavois. What's machshavois mean? Thought. The call Yetzer Machshavais Libai Ragra Kolayo. Where do you do your thinking? In your heart or in your mind? Oh, Lay means mind. Rabbis Machshavais Belevish. Where do you do your thinking? Over here? No, over here. Rabbi Victor Miller Hatzal used to talk about this many times. The word lay, first and foremost, does not mean heart, it means mind. The mitzvah to be Simcha is a choice in what I'm thinking. The feeling, the emotion of happiness is the result of what I'm thinking. Which means, is it possible to be Simcha even when things are going wrong? And the answer is, depends on what I'm thinking. What am I focusing on? Is it possible for someone to be in jail 10 years? Let's add on another two. 12 years? Um, 
having had an attempted assassination by his own brothers. Uh, and then they switched to plan B, let's just throw him in a pit, 20 Amos deep, going to Medrash Um, You know what, let's, let's sell him. Oh my gosh, assassination? Then we'll just drop him in a pit, which is most likely going to die from. There's only the Hashem and grab him in there. There's no water to break the fall. Oh, let's sell him. He's survivable, let's sell him. And now he's falsely accused and he's in jail. One year, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years. Um, does Yosef Hatzadik, would you blame him for going through the following thoughts? Why am I in jail? Oh, yeah, my brothers. My brothers. If I ever get my hands on my brothers. <laughs> now, would you blame, would you blame anybody who's wiltering in jail for a decade? And then makes an attempt of his shadows to come out, adds on another two years. Bitterness, anger, resentment could easily be understood. And yet, how did Yosef Hatzadik look at his matzah? What was his response? Loyate, Shalakimosi, it wasn't you who sent me in here. Ella, Elohim, was a Oh, interesting. So, where did he get that? This is the mindset. If you go through any of the Abbas, and for that matter, most of the Imamis, you'll find that the vast majority had very difficult lives. Asar and Nisyonis, Nisar Kodesh Baku, it's Asar, Abraham. Abraham went through ten different trials. Not easy. Uh, they were all really hard. First and last ones were the only places in the whole of Tanakh where you see the language Lech Lecha. Lech go, Lecha. Into yourself. Oh, says the stipler, meaning. The ability to be Ayyumid in that Messiah is inside of us. First and last. Avraham Avinu Sarmin went through most of those Nisyonis with Avraham Avinu. Vast majority. Sarmin was barren 90 years. Is that a long time? She's kidnapped, not once, twice. She took on a co wife, Beruah HaKodesh, was still paying the price of Yishmael. Ladies, any of you, is that a good idea? <laughs> You have to have a lot of courage. We also have to afford more than one wife. But how do you do that? She she took on this trial for the sake of being by there building Kali Israel. She went through a terrible nishayus. Rav. She went through the famine with Avraham Avinu. Sarah Shnira. Any well, any great personality. Moshe Rabbeinu. They all went through tremendous. Sarah Shnira, a phenomenal personality. I once heard from a. Talmida um, of Rebbe Kaplan, who was a Talmida Mukhak, of Mukhak of, of, uh, of Sarah Shnira, that the one thing that was so compelling about her personality was her Simcha, Simcha Sakhayim. And here's a lady that was married, divorced, never had any children. It's not popular to say she had married and divorced a second time, so I'm not going there. But she could easily say, what a, what a, what a, look at my life, I'm a seamstress. Whoa. Where was her mind? Focused on bitterness? Focused on what's happening to her? Which are, some English dictionaries actually translate, define, sorry, define happiness as what happens to me. So that when it's good, then I'm happy. When it's not good, well, of course I'm not happy. When I've got health, oh, then I'm happy. Wealth, oh, then I'm happy. Minus that, I'm not so happy. Oh, I've got wife and children and a supportive husband and great mother-in-law, father-in-law, brother-in-law. Someone once asked me for a definition of a dysfunctional family. So that's quite easy, actually. The, the definition of a dysfunctional family is any family with more than one member. <laughs> <laughs> I could easily think that happiness is what happens to me, and yet we see Sarah Schneerer, arguably, and this is not my words, Ramosha Kebroni at Zal said, there's nobody... No Rosh Hashiva of God of Dirt in the last hundred years that matches the accomplishments of this one Isha who never went to Shiva, never learned the blood of Gemara, and yet she has shaped Klal Yisrael. There's probably not a person in the room today who's not directly affected because of what she built, the base of the world. She started with five Talmidot. I think it was 1923. By 1939, 49,000 students decimated by the Second World War, and survivors, the 
inspiration they had from her, Simcha Zachayim, was so deeply penetrating, they began out, uh, based out of movement all over again. And many of us are products of, oh, here's a person that could easily said, what's happening to me, what's happened to me, is going to affect my happiness. I said, no, 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 no. There's a bunch in this world, and my question is not, why is this happening to me, but what can I do? How can I become a better person? That's even because of what I've been through. So, number one, means I wasn't enjoying being happy in here, in my thoughts. What's good about my life, about my wife, about my spouse, about my house, about my wealth, about my health? I'm a poet, and I know it. <laughs> what, what we focus on, let's just keep you awake, sorry. What we focus on is our reality. Says the Baal Shem HaKadosh, the three-letter root, Simcha, Samea, is the exact letter, Sham, Maya. There's your mind. That's happiness. Happiness is over here. What am I thinking about? What am I focusing on? Oh, so that means only when it's good or even when it's not so good. Betuv Levav, oh, Lev, most of the time does not, no, most of the time does not mean emotion. It really means mind. The two are very closely connected. That's what Rabbi uh, Victor Miller says. Why does Kosh Baruch Hu use the word lay interchangeably? But it has both meanings. Why? Oh, because Hashem wants us to know He's not interested in us being clinically right. He doesn't, he's not interested in us just being, having the right thoughts. He wants us to get excited about the right thoughts. Oh, Imuna, what an amazing thought to have. Rabbi Shalom, you really are in my world? You really, you really are? In our life, you really are on schedule, keeping all your promises to Klal Yisrael. And, and we're right near the end of 5,774. We're so close to 6,000. We're so close to the final Gola. Hashem wants us to get excited about learning, davening, chesed. So it's not enough just to have the right thoughts in labor over here. He wants it to reach the labor over here. That's why the Yadata Hayai, every day, I should know over here. But it should brought the Hashem of Israel, Levavecha, bring it into your emotions. There, there it means emotions. Oh, but it doesn't always mean emotions. Most of the time it means, means mind. In the words of Rabbi Victor Miller, he quotes Shema Melech. Call <coughs> Yimei Ha'ani, right. All the days of the poor man are negative, bad. <coughs> Shlomo Malak is hot on the colada. If you know someone who can't meet their mortgage or their rent, uh, they're behind on tuition, um, uh, the, the lease is. Uh, 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 um, Credits are running after me, I can't, I'm way behind on my grocery bills. Call me Hani Ryan. Well, it's so obvious, do I need Shlomo Malak to tell me that? Finish the pasuk. The toy lave. Mishta Tamid. A good mind. Is that a constant banquet? Oh, what type of Ali is Shlomo Malik referring to in the first part of the Pasuk? Oh, Ania, Ania's Bedas. There's nothing worse than that. What's, what's Ania's Bedas? What's poverty of the mind? It's not unintelligent. No, no, no. A person can be very intelligent and still be poverty stricken in their mind because of poor thinking. Looking down on people that I think are less than me. Or making a big deal out of the not good points in my husband, in my wife, in my children, in my mother, in my father-in-law, in my community, in my chibrusa, in the shir, in the, in the world, in the politics. What? Where's my mind? And if I'm going to be focused on the negative, if I have a right to complain about what's wrong with my life, my wife, my health, my wealth, my home, my kids... If I have a right to complain about what's wrong, I should at least be consistent with my own logic and also count what's right. Oh, that's late time. Mishnah Tamid? At a constant banquet? How's that possible? Is that just denial of all the Ra? So it comes along, Rabbi Victor Miller, and explains a little bit further. Betuv Lebav, Merai Kal. I'm supposed to be Besimcha, where does that take place? Over here. Betuv Lebav means good thinking. Merayv Kol. What does Merayv Kol mean? Says Rashi. 
But I, Shahai Allah, called to while I had it good, I wasn't counting it. And because I wasn't counting it while I had it good, I should have to take it away from me so that I can start paying attention to what really is good in my life. I don't have to wait, God forbid, to lose a leg or an arm or an eye. I can appreciate each part of my body every morning. Zoykev Kifufi. Thank you for my spine. Thank you for my nervous system. Thank you for all the bones of my body. Oh, Mal Bisharim, thank you for my clothes. Oh, Pukiyakim, thank you for my eyes. Oh, every day we have the opportunity to be grateful for the good that's in my life. So, so far, the Pasuk is revealing that happiness is enjoying being a from Yes. How do I do that? Focus on the good. <coughs> oh, does that mean there is good to focus on? So, Perak Havav, same parasha, Garnasi Kisavoy, Perak Havav, Pasuk Yud Allah, tells us, the Samachta Bechol Ha Toy. Asher, Nasan, Lecha, Hashem, Elokecha. I'm being commanded to enjoy all the good that Hashem has gifted to me. Nasan is a Lashon of Matana. Because the Kodesh Baruch owes me nothing. Nothing. He owes me nothing. The fact that I'm alive, my Ta'ani, is not just gratitude. That's too simple. Yes, it is gratitude. But it's way beyond that. My Ta'ani is an admission. And that's what my Ta'ani means. I'm admitting. Same Lashon as Haida, gratitude is victory. I'm admitting what? <coughs> that I went to sleep last night with no contract. You're not mechuyiv to waking up the next morning, and it doesn't always happen. But the fact that I did wake up, this is the biggest riot, this is the greatest demonstration. You, Rebbe have not given up hope in me. <coughs> How? Because otherwise, why am I here? Oh, so you know that I still can't change and become a better me. Oh, so Moedani is really a haidah, it's a gratitude and an admission. That if you haven't given up hope in me, how much more so I shouldn't give up hope in me? How I am here today? Oh. Happiness and gratitude are synonymous. The samachta, be happy. That means pay attention to all the good. Hashem nasan l'chashem 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 But wait a minute, what happens if I'm not happy in my mind? I've got a very difficult task. Some of my kids are really hard. Really, you have no idea. Someone asked me if I ever hit my kids. I never, never hit my kids. Except in self-defense. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't get me wrong. I, uh, <coughs> I love kids. I work with them uh, 30 years now. Actually, yeah, I've just finished making my entire house childproof. But they're still getting in. Paul, you have no relationship to me. Anyone here has teenagers? What? Anyone here has teenagers? Yeah? So you'll understand why some, some animals eat their young. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, cue <humor> aside. <laughs> the Samachta Bechonatai, that means to say that it really is good. So one second. Okay, it's very nice that it is possible to choose happiness in difficult times. But is it really actually a tzivoy? Is it really a command? Is it really a command? It comes along with Siddha Shah in Perakutes and tells us, um, the real test of my Ava to Kadosh Baruch is B'Shaz HaDochet, when it's not easy. Pressure. It's not easy. Today we're living in exceptional times. You can say that almost about any generation. But there are unique aspects to this particular Dochet. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, just tell me if you think I'm exaggerating. Has there ever been a generation where our children are so overexposed to information? True or false? Overexposed to media. Overexposed to immediate access to whatever's going around nationally, globally, locally. True or false? Overexposed to multicultures. Overexposed to the multi values represented by multicultures. Absolutely true. And yet they haven't developed it, because they're children. They haven't developed the ability to articulate the confusion. They haven't developed the maturity or the emotional vocabulary to tell us, the parents, Mahantim, adults, what a confusing world I'm being raised in. There are many unique aspects to the world we're living in. And there's a tremendous amount of lahats, of pressure. What does a Kashbuch want from me? This week's parasha, Medjish Rabbah, B'nai Israel are compared to a olive. What happens when you squeeze an olive? What comes out? Oh, and what determines 
the quality of the oil. How hard you squeeze? Or the ripeness of the olive. The ripeness of the olive. Oh, so we're compared to an olive. You know why? Because Hashem tests us. How does Hashem test us? Olam and soil. Or, or this whole world. It's not this olam and this yoy knows. It's called olam and soil. Why? Because all the nisyonis of this world, they're all part of one big test. And what's that big test? Hashem squeezing us. And when he squeezes us, what comes out? Whatever's inside. If I'm right and mature, a mature response will come out. If I'm really, really, I'm so easily angered, so easily provoked to uh, getting upset with my spouse and my kids, and you squeeze me, you press my buttons, guess what's going to come out? Anger. Frustration. Business. Resentment. If I'm struggling with my anger, and you squeeze me, whoever you are, my neighbor, my co-worker, my boss, my client, my friends, uh, family, media family, extended family, co everybody, whoever they are that squeezes me, if I'm struggling, what will come out? Oh, a struggle. If a person's kaibesh at Yitzray is controlling himself, his mind, his emotions, because the mind controls our emotions, that's where our emotions start. What I think affects what I feel. The feeling of happiness is the result of what I'm thinking. The feeling of unhappiness is the result of what I don't have in my life. Oh, so if I practice enough times thinking about what I don't have in my marriage, with my kids, in my finances, in my work, guess what? I will eventually feel negative towards those people or those circumstances. Oh, so comes along the turn and Medrash Rabba tells me, we're compared to an olive, because our Kodesh Baruch was in the business of squeezing. Not to hurt. No, 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 no. It's not about pain. It's about revealing ourselves. How do we get to see who we are? Lech, lecha. Oh, how, how does that happen? Well, Hashem is going to give ten squeezes to Abraham Avinu and see what comes out. Does the Kodesh Baruch know, not know what's going to come out? No, it's not. Hashem knows already. Oh, so who's it for? Who's the sign for? Oh, it's for me to see. In fact, the word Nisayim, Lasha Gaj is a perfect language, has a two-letter root. What's the two-letter root of Nisayim? Nais. Now, what's beautiful about Lasha Gaj is in many aspects, but Lasha Gaj is a perfect language. God created the universe with this language. Created reality. That's why the Christians deliberately mistranslate certain words to avoid the Hashkafa contained in the word. The King James Bible was uh, put together uh, in uh, 1604 through 1611. King James, he contracted 47 cardinals, I'm not going into details now, they were all linguists. They knew exactly what, they knew Latin, they knew Greek, and they knew Biblical Hebrew, Mishnaic Hebrew, they were, they were scholars. They knew exactly what they were doing when one of the 15 conditions of how to translate our Torah into English, which would be the final version of the King James Bible and the Church of England, no one else was allowed, you're not allowed to have any other translation other than this one. They knew exactly what they were doing when they mistranslated Chaim. Chaim we translate as life. That's correct, according to the King James Bible. Just look at the word. Is it Lashniach in the Rabbin? Okay, so what's the correct translation? Life. It's interesting. Guess what? If there's no word in Lashniach Kodesh for a word, what does that mean? If there's no word in Lashniach Kodesh for something, what does that mean? It doesn't exist. It may be a human perception of our reality, but it's not Hashem's reality. There's no word in Lashon Kodesh for life. The word high is not the singular form of high. It's an adjective. It means alive. Like Oit Avinu Chai, Oit Yosef Chai. Yosef is still alive. Oit Am Yisrael Chai. There's no word for life. Why not? Oh, because it doesn't exist. This world is Olam Shechem. Olam Hems. Olam Adinyan. Olam Oh, there, there's at least two worlds. At least when, if you talk about Gilgal, it can be more than, for sure, quite a few lives. We're not going there now, but I'm just giving an example. Oh, Nisayan has a two-letter of Nase. Nase has at least five meanings. Rebellion should have learned. You've got unlimited imagination. Why would you have one word? The two-letter root of Nisayan have many meanings. What does Nase mean? Miracle. Miracle. What else does it mean? Test. Test. What else does it mean? Amen. Flag. Excellent. What else does it mean? Star. There's a banner. What else does it mean? Nisa also means to elevate. Landos means to run away, escape. Rebellion. In English, you've got one word for escape. 
a second word for a banner or a flag, another word for a miracle, a different word for test. Why do you have one word, Nisoyan, and contained in it are at least five different meanings? There are no mistakes in this language. You are looking at the keyboard of creation. You're looking at the DNA, the spiritual chemistry of reality. Just like H2O is another language that defines... Well, not water, water. Right? <laughs> okay, so I'll translate it. Water. Okay, so H2O refers to water. But this is a separate language and it's referring to the exact same thing. Oh, this is another language that defines the chemical structure of hydrogen and oxygen. Oh, Lashna Kaidesh is a. The letters of Lashna Kaidesh are the spiritual makeup of reality. Oh, so the word nes means all of those because they are all correct. Because contained in the Nisayan are all of those. Nisa means to elevate. Because when we overcome our craving, or our desire, or has some an addiction, or last week they let me out of chocolate rehab. So I had to make a commitment not to have more than one chocolate box a day. So you know, if a person can overcome whatever it is that they are, their anger, oh, we feel elevated. Um, but I can also run away. How do I run away from the soil? I'll accuse you, not you personally, blame you, complain about you, deny it's my fault, give excuses why it's your fault that I'm unhappy in this relationship, in this community, in this school, in this yeshiva. Oh, as long as I can A, accuse, B, blame, C, complain, D, deny, E, give excuses, I call it the A, B, C, D, E of getting out of responsibility for changing the only person I was created to change. Because as long as it's your fault! I uh, didn't mean to wake you up. Sorry, man. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> no, I was in a, uh, was a, uh, um, a lot of people's home a few, uh, couple of years ago in uh, North New Jersey. Um, I think the average age in the room was about 107. <laughs> there was one lady that had been four, very astute. Someone asked her what, what's special about your age. She said, no peer pressure. <laughs> so, the Hemi um, hooked up to a mic which was much more sensitive than this one and there was a, a gentleman in the front row was snoring away and was going over the uh, auditorium so I said to the guy next to him, just give him a nudge and wake him up Rabbi, you go to sleep, you wake him up! <laughs> Alright, so you know, when I accuse you for ruining the best years of my life I accuse, blame, complain, deny, excuse. While I'm blaming the whole world around me, who has to change according to me? Who has to change? Everybody else. I don't have to change. Oh, so I'm running away from my design. When Hashem squeezes me, it's not you who's squeezing me. In the Marshal, Rabbi Wasserman brings from the Chavetz Chaim, oh, imagine a dog being hit by a stick and then the dog growling and trying to bite the stick. Not realizing, of course, that it's not the stick that's hitting him, it's the person holding the stick. Oh, eventually, I have to go straight to the source. It's not, it's not my wife, it's not my husband, it's not my children. Eventually, 1 800 Almighty, the ultimate therapist, eventually, help me. Help me get through this. Give me the clarity. Help me find the right people to help me through this. Give me the support. Help me find the strength within. Because you couldn't possibly give this to me unless I can ha handle it. I don't want to run away. Because when I blame, complain, deny, excuse, it doesn't, it doesn't get me anywhere other than you having to squeeze me again. Not to hurt me, but to give me another chance to reveal myself. Oh, that's the banner. What's the toughness of a banner? A flag? Oh, it shows identity. Oh, and the sign reveals me to myself. Oh, the banner shows me direction. This is the direction I'm going in. So when you squeeze me, you reveal me to me. People don't shape us. Circumstances don't shape us. They reveal us to ourselves. Oh, let me go and see what I am. Oh, I'm angry, frustrated. Um, I, I, I can improve on my photography and my Buddha. And I say, oh, when we're squeezed, it's a mirror. So let me give you an example of how far this goes. Imagine, we're not that far away, I think, from a technology that might be so sophisticated that you could have a piece of technology about the face of, of this watch. One side is an H button, and the other side is D. H stands for happy. And it's wirelessly connected to your brain and your emotions. And when you press H, every, it's been programmed, reprogrammed, every ha 
happy experience you ever had in your life. Every happy moment, memory, goes pouring through your mind. It's so exciting. I am so happy. First, a blood vessel. Um, if you press the D button, and for depression. Now, every negative thought and experience I ever had of pain and disappointment and anguish.
pain, 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 pain. Guess what I'm going to walk around feeling? Angry, bitter, disappointment, hurt, pain, accusative, blaming, comparing, complaining, denying, excusing. So says Rabbi Victor Miller, I get to choose. There's a Torah in Mem Tess, I think, in Lucas Imran, which actually touches the words Yetzatayim and Yetzahara as Machshavas Tovis, Machshavas Rise. Oh, my Yetzatayim is all about what am I thinking? Am I thinking, Hashem, you're with me? And you're, you're squeezing me? And, and you're making me stronger? Because I can choose to become stronger or fall apart, run away. But if I do run away, what will you do next to Kavsparku? Because you love me and you trust that I can change, what will you do next? You'll squeeze me again. The very person that I'm asking you, please give me big shots from the toilet. I can't take this person always pressing my buttons. So what does Hashem say? Okay, Rieti, you've asked for patience. I'm going to give you your next exercise. And sends in the same person. The person does the person. And Hashem says, don't you understand? You're asking for patience. So I'm going to send you the person who is annoying you to give you practice in being patient. <coughs> oh, so my spouse is my coach. My kids are my coaches. They're the ones who squeeze me the most to help me change. Because a banner, a flag, is revealing direction and identity. Oh, so what comes out of us is a banner. It's a flag to show me who I am. It reveals me to me. So I get a chance to choose. Do I want to continue being so angry, upset, bitter, <coughs> easily provoked to rage? Or do I want to start working on myself? And work harder. And get through it. And show more appreciation, gratitude, understanding, listening, empathy to this child. Who I'm clueless as to what they're really going through. Because we, we can't, none of us in this room were raised in their generation. And, you know, you talk about generation gap, um, so just in terms of years, okay, it's just one generation, but in terms of what technology has done to accelerate the pace of life and the amount of information that children are exposed to that they don't have the Kalin to properly make sense out of, global terrorism? People in the street, you have to watch out, that in a single punch they're attempting to knock a person out? And they don't care if the angle would be such that it would kill the person? It's a game? Where's the value of life gone? What is a child supposed to think? A young nine-year-old trusts the beard and appearance of a frumiet who then... Kletsky. And what are children supposed to think? So-and-so in jail? From? Beard? How could it be? If a child's got a healthy mind, they're forced to say, does Yiddishkeit make sense? How do I know this is for real? And they're not even articulating that, but you can be certain it's percolating. And when they see a brother, an old sister, a cousin falling off the deck, or an uncle and aunt questioning, or some parents, or extended family splitting up, divorce, you keep on adding all the different things that children are being exposed to, that's a massive assignment. Do I owe it to myself as a parent, as a teacher, as a mechanic, as, a, as an adult to at least admit I don't understand my kids? I can't possibly put myself fully in their position and at least in that position I will be less judgmental, less hard and demanding and more understanding and put more on the positive about what's good about you and build you from there. In the words of Baal Shem HaKadosh, Sur Says the Baal Shem, don't read the Pasuk that David and is telling me the only way to get to the Asi Toiv is the Sumira. He says, no, this is how you read the Pasuk. If you want to get the Sumira, you want to get rid of the negative, Asi Toiv. Focus on the good. And guess what? Sumira will take care of itself. It will fall away on its own. Pump my spouse, my children, with more love and appreciation and, and gratitude, understanding, listening, compliments. So it comes along. The Torah, it tells me after. Love Kash Baruch Hu with all your thoughts. Even the negative, yeah, because when I have negative thoughts, I to think about things I'm not supposed to think of, and I try to switch my mind to something else. Oh, I'm serving the Kash Baruch with my Yitzhahara, <laughs> with my negative thinking. Because any bad behavior I have, or words that come out of my mouth, 
don't start from the words or the actions. They start over here. Oh, so that's where I'm supposed to... The master key, take care of that, because that's where it's at. Sham, lie up, simple, it's over here. And most of the time when you translate late as mind, changes the whole context. Rabbi Yochum and Zakai said that five Talmudim, main Talmudim, ten, come, say, Ray, go, go out and come back and tell me which is the best there to go on. And of the two, positive and negative, what does he ta- say, to say to us? Oh, Rabbi Lazar ben, ben Arach, he's the best of all. Because his words include all of yours. And which words were they? Lave time. So unfortunately, we translate it the way the Christians do, good heart. What does good heart mean? Good intentions, sincere, okay, that's nice. But that's not the real meaning there, because the word lay has four meanings, and we have to take our Torah seriously, and Chazal seriously enough, trust them, that if they gave us four meanings, let's identify which one makes sense over here. Oh, toiv lay, lay toiv means a good mind. Because if I've got a good mind, guess what? I will attract a, a shachin toiv, a chavin toiv. If I've got a good mind, I will be careful not to borrow without paying back. Loi ve enum shalem. Oh, in your words of late time is nifal to bring everyone else's words. Oh, it's because that's the master key. That's the root of it. So comes on Torah and asks me to love Kosh Baruch with my thoughts. Uvachol nafshukha, which was al taich for Rabbi Kiva, some caliph in, in brachas, afilu no tel nafshukha. Not if, when he takes my soul, when I die, how will I go? Angry, bitter, resentful, why me? Or will I go second bench, Shalom? I love you. I'll fight to hold on to life for the last second. But in those last moments, when it's for sure this is it, I'm going to say, I love you. Shema Yisrael, Bechol, Nafshecha. Filu, Nautel, Nafshecha. Oh, that's interesting. This morning and tonight, we practice, and we're going to practice again, how we're going to die. That's what we're doing every day. We're training in how we're going to go. Bechol, Meodecha, with all your ma'ayit. Shlach Kodesh says, ma'ayit is Isis Adam. With all my... Potential. Adama. Adama's not good or bad. Depends what, how you see it and nurture it, sunshine, water. Oh, we're not good or bad. We're, we're potential. So what determines how good or bad I am? Oh, my Bechira. What, what choices do I make? Where do they start? Over here. V'chol me'odecha. Chazal tell us last Mishnah in Brachas. Her test Mishnah. Hey, v'chol me'odecha. V'chol ma'odecha. With all my possessions. All my money. How do I give or not? How generous am I or not? How sharing am I, especially with the immediate family and extended family and community, in being Maxic Torah? Oh, how do I, what's my relationship with money? Is it really from a Kaddish Prabhu? Leah Kesa, I own everything and it's all really only a Matana. And I'm supposed to take Chazal seriously. Ten life, Mishalai! Sha'at al Mishalai! I own nothing! I'm owed nothing. Whatever I have is really yours. So it's only us to give back. Bechol mamanecha, lava kach bravo, with everything he's given me. Uva, dava acha, says the Mishnah, this is where we close. Bechol meodecha, bechol mida, u mida, shuhu moidit lacha. With every measure, Hashem measures out to me. Bein mida taiba, bein mida taranumut. Whether it's obviously good, blessing, health, wealth, family, children, extended family, community. Of course, meodecha, I'm going to love you and thank you. Lashon mida. My dad. Obey me that or whether Hashem, and I'm going to avoid the Christian translation, it doesn't mean punishment. Obey me that or is extracting payment for what I owe. What should, my, what should my response be to both the good and the not so good? Have a mind alive. Be grateful. Be mind alive. Whoa. Exceedingly, exceedingly grateful. Oh, so this life is all about gratitude. This life is about Simcha Sakai. Simcha in this world in preparation for the next because we don't invest in this world alone. Every mitzvah we're doing is all about investing in Elam Oh, Simcha Sakai is happiness for both worlds because the extent to which we're happy here is going to affect our place in Elam Haba. And Simcha is probably the biggest one. According to Orchat Sadikim and Shah Simcha, if I do a mitzvah and it's not for Simcha, Versus you do a mitzvah with simcha. Is there a difference? There's one worth more than the other. How much more? Elef yadais! Doing a mitzvah with simcha is worth a thousand times a regular mitzvah. Is that a good deal? Is that a good deal? Oh, Hakash Baruch wants me to be with simcha 
even when it's not easy. Now you might say, well, that's only for Hasidim, Sadiqim, uh, Bali, Madrika. Well, guess what? Shulchan Aruch passes this case in the Gemara. In Reish Chav Beis, Chayav Adam, Levarech Al Hara, Kishim Levarech Al Atay, Beleza Simcha, Bedar Shlema, Ubenevich Chavitza. His mind is completely aware that this is not easy. But I'm going to be grateful anyway. And thank you, Hashem. Oh, so Simcha is a choice. And if the choice is hard, that's even better. Because you get points according to the fun, Sara Agra. Oh, how difficult is it? To be Basimcha is much harder to be Basimcha when things are not going right. Oh, that's worth much more. How much more? I was with Nassim Parag Gimel. Mutum mitzvah achas pitsa, mimea shaloi pitsa. It's worth a hundred times more. Oh, so if you do a mitzvah, it's not easy, that's worth a hundred times. But you do it with a smile, oh my gosh. It's a hundred times a thousand. It's a hundred thousand times better than a regular mitzvah. Oh my gosh, is that a good deal? So when Hashem squeezes us, and we're being invited to respond, and do it with simcha, oh my gosh. And it's not easy? A hundred thousand times. You go to Minyan, and you're tired. And it's snowing, or it's freezing. And I'm going to go in. Not easy. And you do it with a smile. That's worth a hundred thousand million. Is that a good deal? Getting up a little bit earlier on Shabbos morning to learn, prepare for the shir, go to the shir. And it's not easy. And you do it with a smile. Oh my gosh. Akash Baruch Hu loves us when he squeezes us. He's not in the business of hurting. He's in the business of inviting us to invest in ourselves in this world. And Olam Haba, and Simchas Achayim, I close, and I truly mean it. A gentleman comes to a pub, orders a pint of beer, and is sitting there staring at his beer, and suddenly, a guy gets off his Harley Davidson outside, and storms in, a hell's angel, and he rips the, the pint of beer away from him, and gulps it down. And the man who owned the beer, like, bursts into tears. So, the, the hell's angel said, Anyway, I, the one thing I can't take is, is a, is a grown-up man crying. What's the matter with you? Why are you crying? You don't understand. You don't understand. I left home late this morning because my wife said, that's it, I'm getting divorced. So I turn up late to work. My, my boss says, that's it, you're fired. So I lost my wife, I lost my job. I go out into the parking lot, my car is stolen. Everything's gone wrong with me. So I say, no, life is not worth living anymore. So I came to the pub, grabbed my sodas and a pint of beer, and I was just waiting for the pill of cyanide to dissolve the in the cup, and now you come along and take it away! <laughs> anyway, enough of my problems. What's your, how's your day going? My <laughs> 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 show wants us to stick it through. Don't give up. Hold on, because if you woke up this morning, that's my show's. Stamp of approval, because his effort is pretty decent. I think everyone should be right to do it. If he says, you belong here today, how right, you woke up. Oh, he hasn't given up on us. How much more so we should give it up on ourselves. It's never too late to be the Simcha. And even if I fall a hundred, thousand times, a week, a day, I should going to squeeze me again. He's going to squeeze me. Why? Not because he hates us, not because he wants to hurt us. He wants to invite us for another chance, another chance. And every single time can be worth hundreds of thousands, even many more. Thank you for your patience. It was okay to see you come and share with me. Amen.